against is right Dressler. <laughs> Thank you, James. And thanks to all the organizers for giving me the chance to speak today. So my talk is about optimization over the hypercube via sums of non-negative circuit polynomials. And this is joint work with Adam Kurpich and Timo de Wolf. And since the audience is really diverse, I thought I also spent the first couple of slides by just setting some really, really basic background and context. And then I will introduce sums of non-negative circuit polynomials and I will give you an overview of constraint polynomial optimization with these polynomials. And after that, we will tackle optimization over the hypercube. Okay, so the underlying problem of my talk is a constraint polynomial optimization problem. That is, we have real multivariate polynomials F and a bunch of G1 to Gs, and we minimize the polynomial F subject to the set K in which every polynomial Gi is non-negative. So K is the basic closed semi-algebraic set defined by the polynomials Gi, and the optimal value of this problem will be denoted with Fk star. And clearly, this optimization problem is equivalent to finding the largest real number uh, lambda such that f minus lambda is non-negative for all x and k. So the non-convex optimization problem can be reduced to the question of deciding non-negativity of a polynomial over a certain set. And this is a key challenge in real algebraic geometry with a wide range of applications like in robotics, control theory, economics, theoretical computer science and so on. And although this problem is decidable, it is well known that it is in general NP-hard. And therefore, one is interested in finding sufficient conditions to certify non-negativity, which are easier to check, so-called certificates of non-negativity. And you all know the standard example for such certificates, namely sums of squares, because obviously, if you can write a polynomial as a sum of squared polynomials, then this polynomial is non-negative. But it is even better than that because I can also test if a polynomial is a sum of squares and even find decomposition, um, as well as decompositions via semi-definite uh, programming. And uh, semi-definite programming is a convex optimization problem, which we just saw that um, can be seen as a generalization of linear programming and how an SOS um, can be cast as a semi-definite optimization problem we also already saw yesterday, I think, in James' talk. So let's get back to constraint polynomial optimization problems. How do we solve these problems? And the good news here are that there exist various positive Stellensätze and relaxations to tackle these kind of problems in many cases. And these methods were studied intensively by means of aspects like uh, exactness and quality of the relaxations, the speed of the computations and general geometric aspects of the underlying structures. And a very famous approach for solving CPOPs is Lasser's relaxation. So what is that? I will give you the dual formulation with polynomials. So we relax the non-negativity condition to an SOS condition. And this SOS formulation is given by Putina's positive Stellensatz. So we have here that a polynomial can be written as a sum of products of SOS polynomials and the constraints GI. And bounding the degree of the involved polynomials gives us the parameter FSOSD, which uh, converges when we let go D to infinity to the optimal value FK star. And finding a degree D SOS certificate can be done by an by solving an SDP of size n to the OD. Yeah. And for solving SDPs, 
There exist various software. So I listed here a few, Zidumi, Almap, STPT3, Mossack, and many more. Um, but from the practical point of view, it is also known that solving semi-definite programs is very, are very, um, is very time consuming. So the corresponding semi-definite programs quickly get very large in size, which often is an issue for problems with high degree or many variables. And also it is an open problem still if um, uh, an SDP of size n to the OT really can be solved in time n to the OD. And to tackle these issues, current research focuses mainly on creating better solvers and exploiting additional structures uh, like symmetry and sparsity. And in contrast, our idea is to use other non-negativity certificates independent uh, from these classical SOS certificates. Yeah? And before I get more into depth, let me fix some notations. So we are working here over R x sub n 2d. This is the vector space of real polynomials and n variables of degree at most 2d. In this space, we have the cone of non-negative polynomials denoted by Pn 2d. And in this cone, there live the cone of sums of squares, sigma n 2d. OK, now let's talk about Song polynomials. The main actor for these polynomials is a circuit polynomial. A circuit polynomial is supported on a finite set A and has this specific form and meets some special conditions on the support, which I want to explain by means of this picture, where you can see the support plotted as these red dots and the blue square. So first, the Newton polytope of this polynomial is a simplex with even vertices alpha j, so these red dots here belonging to these exponents alpha j, and these are even vertices, means that all alpha j are even. And as you can see, this Newton polytope of this polynomial coincides with the um, convex hull of the support of this polynomial. And we have one additional interior point, this beta, lying strictly in the interior of this simplex. That means we can write beta uniquely as a convex combination of the vertices and these lambda j, which are the barycentric coordinates relative to the vertices. And the third condition is a necessary condition for f to be non-negative, namely that the coefficients here corresponding to the vertices of the simplex have to be strictly positive. So in short, a circuit polynomial is a polynomial whose support forms an even simplex with one additional interior point. And the term circuit is chosen since the support set forms a circuit, uh, which is a minimally affine dependent set. And an example of such a polynomial is the famous Motzkin polynomial, which is the first polynomial found to be non-negative, but not SOS. So let's take a look at the support here. And in fact, this little picture shows the support of the Motzkin polynomial. So we see, yeah, it meets all these three conditions. So it is indeed a circuit polynomial. And for every such circuit polynomial, we can define the so-called circuit number as this product where in the numerator are the coefficients corresponding to the vertices of the simplex. And in the denominator and the exponents, there are the relative uh, barycentric coordinates. So this number can be derived by the initial circuit polynomial immediately. Yeah? So if you give me a circuit po um, polynomial, you can easily compute this number. And the key fact now is that testing non-negativity of circuit polynomials can be done easily via this number, namely with this condition here. And by easily, uh, I mean we only have to solve a system of linear equations. OK, 
Okay, then writing a polynomial as a sum of non-negative circuit polynomials, abbreviated as SONG, gives us a certificate of non-negativity. Yeah. And let's define the set of SONG polynomials more formally. So we will denote it with CN to D. And it consists really of all polynomials and n variables of degree at most to D, which can be written as a sum of non-negative circuit polynomials. And we can say even more, namely this set is indeed a convex cone, clearly living inside the non-negativity cone. And if we compare the SOS cone with this new Song cone, we see that these two cones intersect, but not contain each other. And in more detail, the Song cone only lies in the SOS cone in these cases, so in the univariate case, in the quadratic case, and for binary quartics, which are exactly the Hilbert cases where the SOS cone coincides with the non-negativity cone. And on the other hand, the Song uh, cone doesn't contain the SOS cone in these cases. So for all grades uh, larger or equal than four and for variables with it, uh, more than two terms. And an important result about Song polynomials and the Song cone is that it is fallen dimensional in the non-negativity cone because this is a necessary condition to establish Song polynomials as a certificate which is really useful in practice. And now I want to mention two properties which are in strong contrast uh, to SOS, to the SOS cone, namely on the one hand, the um, song cone is not closed under multiplication and also not closed under taking affine transformation of variables. And from an optimization perspective, the second condition says that um, a problem formulation obtained by an affine transformation of variables may lead to a problem of different tractability with uh, the song methods, which means on the one hand that um, a, representation, a representation of the problem has to be made very carefully. So this makes the process of algorithm de uh, design more demanding. But on the other hand, even a small change in representation can lead to a song um, certificate or simplify an existing one. Yeah, so note maybe in this context that every affine transformation of variables applied to, for example, the Motskin polynomial never leads to an SOS certificate since the SOS cone is closed under affine transformation of variables. Okay. So, in sum, we have here a really um, as well as independent new cone, which lives inside the cone of non-negative polynomials. And now the question is, how can one check efficiently whether a polynomial has such a song decomposition? And this brings us back to constraint polynomial optimization. So we already saw the SOS STP approach for this problem. And now we would like to have an approximation for FK star with song polynomials. So we would like to relax this non-negativity condition somehow to a song condition. And the, I would say the key strength of Lasser's relaxation is that it yields a converging hierarchy. And really it's a hierarchy converging to our optimal value and to guarantee such an SOS certificate, it uses Putinas positive standards. So one could hope to translate maybe the proof of Putinas positive standards into the song world, but unfortunately this is not possible since the song cone is not closed under multiplication. So we cannot form something like a quadratic module for uh, song polynomials, which we 
would have to have for proving such a positive Stellensatz by Putina. But there also are good news, namely we can use a abstract positive Stellensatz from real algebraic geometry, namely Krivin's positive Stellensatz to obtain, uh, I would say, Schmütgen-like positive Stellensatz for song polynomials. And what is that? This uh, gives us a representation of our polynomial as the sum. So here we have um, a product of song polynomials and products of the constraints. Yeah? So Putina would be a linear, uh, would be linearly in the constraints, but here we have to use really products of the constraints. And for those who are a little bit more familiar with this topic, an analog positive Stellensatz was given by Chandra Sekaran and Shaw for zygnomials via the so-called sums of arithmetic geometric exponentials. Okay, so now we can also define a parameter f song d as the largest linear number gamma such that f minus gamma has this representation as given by the positive Stellensatz. And in addition, we bound the degree. Um, and obviously, this parameter gives us a lower bound for fk star based on the maximal allowed degree in the representing polynomials. And it grows monotonically in D. So it really yields a converging hierarchy, which is degree dependent, to the um, optimal value of our problem fk star. So the provided hierarchy is really complete. Okay, and now, last step, we want to compute this parameter with a suitable optimization uh, program, and there are more good news because we can do this via relative entropy programming. So remember, SOS can be done via semi-definite programming, and here we have a relative entropy program, and what is that? So we have three variables, two of them are non-negative, and we minimize a linear functional subject to linear constraints and such a conic constraint. And this conic constraint defines the relative entropy cone. And what is good about that is a relative entropy program is a convex optimization program due to the joint convexity of this function defining the relative entropy cone. And moreover, we can uh, solve them efficiently with interior point methods due to uh, uh, the existence of a computational tractable barrier function for the uh, function defining the relative entropy cone. So um, computing a degree D song certificate can be done by an explicit relative entropy program. And note, um, this relative entropy program is of size n to the OD. And now, with this in mind, we want to tackle optimization over the hypercube. So we want to prove some complexity bounds, some complexity bounds over the hypercube. So um, let's consider a constrained hypercube optimization problem, which is a special case of a constrained polynomial optimization where the feasible set is uh, restricted to some of the vertices of the Boolean hypercube. And um, again, we are minimizing an n variate polynomial f regarding to some equality constraints, which are given by these quadratic polynomials with two distinct real roots, aj and bj. So these equality constraints give us the really general hypercube aj, bj to the n. And why do we tag here this really general hypercube? Remember, the song cone is not closed under affine transformations of variables. So we really have to prove things here in a very, very general setting. 
Okay, so we have these equality constraints, and then we additionally constrain the hypercube with some inequalities pi. The feasible set will be denoted with curly HP, so the n-dimensional hypercube H, constrained by a bunch of polynomial inequalities given by curly P, which is the set of these pi. And this class of optimization problems really lies at the core of theoretical computer science, because we can, for example, cast max cut or sparse cut problem or the maximum constraint satisfactional problem um, as this kind of constraint hypercube optimization problems. And the main idea here in this word is to find certificates with good complexity in the number of variables n and the maximal total degree d. And what is known about SOS complexity for the Boolean hypercube? So here we know that every feasible n variant constraint hypercube optimization problem with constraints of degree at most d, <coughs> there exists a degree 2n plus 2d SOS certificate. And we already saw or I think I already mentioned, that finding a degree D SOS certificate for non-negativity of a polynomial F on the constraint hypercube can be performed by solving an SDP of size n to the OD. And this is why the corresponding Gramian matrix is of this size. And since every real symmetric uh, matrix which admits or which is positive semi-definite admits a Koleski decomposition, this yields also an explicit SOS decomposition with at most n to the OD squared polynomials. Uh, so these are results, known results about the SOS certificates. And now we prove that analogous results also hold for SONC certificates, namely for every polynomial non-negative over the constraint hypercube with inequalities of degree at most d, there exists a degree of n plus d song certificate. And um, for an n variate polynomial which is non-negative over the constraint hypercube, we have the uh, result that if there exists a dong, uh, degree d song certificate, then there also exists a degree a short degree D song certificate involving at most n to the OD many non-negative circuit polynomials. So we can reduce ourselves in such a degree D song certificate really to n to the OD many non-negative circuit polynomials. And we show these results under the assumption that the uh, constraints PI, so the cardinality of the set P, is polynomial in N, which is, I would say, usual the case because otherwise uh, the polynomial, uh, the problem gets less tractable from the um, optimization point of view. And the proof idea for the second statement is to really um, analyze such a song certificate for a um, polynomial and then to note that one can bound the number of involving song polynomials and these product of the constraints in a certain way, so which yields that we also have a bound for the whole uh, number of terms, namely n to the od. And I actually want to outline the proof of the first statement here. So we have the assumption that we have a polynomial f, and variant, and this is non-negative over the constraint hypercube of degree at most d. And then let's take a look at the proof. So first step, we develop a Kronecker delta function for songs on the hypercube. So that is, we define a function for every vertex of the hypercube as this product. 
So this is a function of degree n. And then we have to note two things, namely the term Kronecker delta function is really justified because this function takes zero for every um, vertex um, except v and for v it takes the value one. And as the function is a product or is a product of the constraints, it is also very obvious that we can write this Konecker delta function in this Schmidtgen type, namely as a sum of products of non-negative reals and products of the constraints GI. Then, second step, we show that a polynomial and variate of degree 2d plus 2, which vanishes on our hypercube, can be represented in this way. So as a sum of song polynomials times the constraints and a sum of song polynomials and the negative constraints. And why is that? So first, it is known that a polynomial which vanishes over the hypercube admits such a, such a representation, namely as a sum of products of some polynomials and the polynomials representing the hypercube. And then we really uh, show that these pj, jj are of this form here. And how do we do that? We look at these polynomials p and decompose them as a sum of monomials and then we tackle really each in a monomial individually and here we can see that if um, this monomial is a monomial square means that if a is positive and m has a exponent an even exponent then we're fine because then this monomial is actually already <coughs> a non-negative circuit polynomial, so it is song, so we're done. And otherwise, we can add a non-negative circuit polynomial having this uh, non-monomial square as an interior point. And then we can um, subtract the redundant monomial squares, so the edges. Uh, so I add a circuit polynomial which has the right interior term, but then I have to get rid of the uh, vertices of the simplex coming from the circuit polynomial. And the little trick is here um, that I can then push this minus sign from subtracting into the GJs because I uh, can take these minus GJs here in the um, representation. And then I only have to make sure that uh, the involved degrees don't exceed. But that's also fine by um, construction. So we know that a polynomial which vanishes over the hypercube can be written like this. And then third step, when restricted to the hypercube, I can write my polynomial in terms of the Konecker delta function like this. So here I separate the vertices by um, um, if they lie in the constraint hypercube and the remaining one, which only comes from the hypercube. And remember, we assume that our polynomial is non-negative over the constraint hypercube, which means that this polynomial F evaluated at a, a point of the constraint hypercube is non-negative, because we assume this. But there might exist an edge uh, vertex here in the remaining ver vertices such that f takes a negative value at this vertex. And if that happens, then we let pv be a polynomial under the constraints such that although uh, evaluated at this vertex, this polynomial takes a negative term and otherwise one. So we can prove that this uh, polynomial can be re really represented as the sum, where here really every term is non-negative. Okay, 
and then you have to note that the right hand side is a polynomial of degree at most n plus d. So this might happen here because so the Kronecker delta function is of degree n and we assume that our constraints are of degree at most d, so the right hand side is really a polynomial of degree at most n plus d. And this is a um, representation over the hypercube, so f minus the right hand side vanishes over the hypercube and then I can use the result from step two to represent my polynomial in this way. So really as the sum here which is a degree uh, at most n plus d polynomial and this finishes the proof. Okay, and now I want to mention some uh, findings about the about positive standards, and namely, after we um, presented our positive standards, which is more like Schmidtian type, we asked if there also exists a representation which is linear in the constraints. So a Putina-like positive standards, and we can answer this now in a negative way because when working on this hypercube, we found a um, function, namely this function here, parameterized by a natural number a. This function admits, uh, um, uh, this function is first positive, strictly positive over the hypercube plus minus one but um, unfortunately admits no Putina-like song representation if the parameter exceeds uh, this term here. And this function can be seen a little bit like a generalized Kronecker delta function because at the um, all once vector it takes the value one, uh, a and at all other um, vertices zero. So it's kind of geometrically obvious that if A then exceeds a certain number that this function does not have such a Putina-like representation because we really need here the products. Okay, so, and uh, because this, um, there are uh, polynomials which don't have such a Putina-like song representation over the hypercube, uh, we can also say that in general there exists no equivalent of Putina's positive standards for song polynomials, which does not say that maybe for special cases um, there might exist such a representation, but so in general not. And I think it's time to wrap up. So Song polynomials uh, provide a valid certificate for optimization over the n-variate hypercube um, HP. Namely, we showed here that for a polynomial f, which is non-negative, on the constraint hypercube with degree at most d, there exists a degree n plus d song certificate. And if f admits, uh, degree D song certificate over this constraint hypercube, then there exists also a short degree um, D song certificate for this polynomial involving at most n to the OD many non negative circumferences. And let me conclude with some open problems. So we saw that um, solving or Finding a degree D song certificate can be done by solving a relative entropy program of size n to the OD. And now the question is if we um, also can do this in time n to the OD. Um, namely, if a um, small or if a short small degree certificate exists, it is not uh, necessarily given that the polynomials in this representation also have 
uh, small coefficients. And the difficulty is here that one really has to um, restrict the um, search space of n variate degree D song certificates to a subset of N2, uh, the OD2 really be able to formulate a relative entropy program in time and to the OD. And um, the proof of the statement of the short song certificate um, only guarantees us such, uh, that such a short certificate exists. But this means, or a priori, it's now not clear how to find such a song certificate uh, efficiently. And then, coming from the fact that the song cone is not closed under affine transformation, um, it would be very interesting to study its affine closure. Because, I mean, the affine closure strictly contains the song cone and still yields a um, non-negativity certificate. So it would be interesting to study this object and also then um, to ask um, how can we compute such extended song certificates efficiently. So how to test membership then in this uh, affine closure. Okay. Thank you. Does a fine closure contain SOS polynomials of, of some? That's a good question. Um, I don't think so. But one had to look into it, I think. If, your, if the Hubble cube is uh, replaced by a general finite uh, variety, do you have similar conclusions? Or? Mm, so if okay. Hubble cube is replaced by a finite variety, we have to yeah, do we have similar conclusions? We're working here on the finite. So I don't take the um, cube, I only take the vertices. If you take any finite variety instead of the hypercube. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly. Ah, ah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, that would be also an open problem. So I think we have such things, but um, how exactly they look like in terms of um, the variable and, and um, the degree d, I would have to study this. Yeah, I guess we have a long break now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, let's think. Here we go again.